I'm Kevin Raber, and I'm downtown Indianapolis at the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, and I'm here to talk about the looming war coming our way in the photography industry. The mirrorless war is here. The bell is tolling for what's coming our way. Let's talk more about that now. For many of us, we entered into this field of digital photography with DSLRs. They were primarily Canon, Nikon, uh, a couple others started making entries into it. And it was a great time, a great revolution, and a marvelous experience for all of us. However, Olympus, Panasonic, and Sony over the last few years, in addition to Fuji, have entered into what's called mirrorless. Now why is mirrorless so important? Mirrorless is important because it takes the mechanics out of the camera. It takes the mirror box out of the camera. And everything is done on the sensor. Focus is done on the sensor. The sensor captures the image. You focus and you see everything the way the sensor sees it. And in mirrorless, working with an electronic viewfinder or monitor on the back of the camera, you can actually see the effects of the image that you're shooting. Because there's no mirror to be flopping back and forth, you can increase the frame rate tremendously, especially on some of the newer cameras. For example, the Sony A9 camera with a 24 megapixel chip is capturing 20 frames a second. There are actually some cameras that are capturing 24 frames per second still, which is actually the same rate that uh, video is being captured. And we're talking, you know, large raw file captures. Over the last few years, companies like Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, Olympus have introduced mirrorless cameras and have modified these cameras and increased the efficiency and innovated new things into these cameras that they have gotten really, really good. And a few months ago, Sony introduced the A7 III. Now for many of us, the Sony A7 III is basically the tipping point a camera less than $2,000 with all sorts of features that you just can't find on any other camera. And it is sold like hotcakes. It's a great camera for portraits. It's a great camera for landscape shooters. It's a great camera for videography. They also introduced the A9, which going up against a professional DSLR camera that has the capability of shooting 20 frames per second. And They've also put out a magnificent set of lenses. Sony's put out the G Master lenses, capable of resolving up to 100 megapixels. Fuji has introduced a lens lineup over the last few years that is just tremendous. Not only the quality of the lenses, but the prime zooms and other things that they put together just are unmatched. Olympus has done the same thing with their Pro line. And of course, Olympus and Panasonic are both micro four thirds and they share the same mount and both companies have a tremendous lineup. But the A7 III is the tipping point. So imagine this, you're Nikon and Canon and you've been sitting there without innovation per se for the last few years and all of a sudden you see the one camera that is a turning point with all the mirrorless features you can imagine. And in the boardrooms and the back rooms of Nikon and Canon, they're beginning to see the sales of their traditional DSLRs go down, and they know it is now time to enter the mirrorless market. You just don't jump into a new marketplace you've never been into before. Yes, granted, Canon has released a small mirrorless camera. Nikon had the N1 camera, but both these companies had such tremendous sales in their DSLR marketplace that they did not want to jeopardize that and the lenses that went with it. However, the time has changed. As of a week or so ago, Nikon released a video and a press release that they have a mirrorless camera in development. Now, why would you do this? Well, first off, 
When you make an announcement like that, you're ready to stall all sales, even the D850 sales, which probably says that you, one reason why you can't get the D850. Uh, so we're not hurting anything by doing that. And they want to have photographers and consumers stop buying cameras until their camera comes out. And on August 23rd, they're gonna tell us more about this camera, but they're a little tricky. They gave us this real big teaser video. And it looks like they're trying to come out with a really nice camera. They're talking about a 24 and a 45 megapixel camera. Maybe they're taking all those 45 megapixel chips from the D850 and putting them in their new mirrorless camera. But, you know, they've got a big new lens flange. They have to introduce new lenses. They promise an adapter that will adapt all their legacy lenses to this new camera. However, what I'm hearing, and we'll wait to see if this is true, that the adapter is going to have one of those see-through mirrors and it. Autofocus is going to be controlled by autofocus points on that mirror because that's the only way they can drive these legacy lenses. There's a lot of engineering going on between how micro motors drive autofocus mechanisms in the mirrorless lenses versus the traditional DSLR lenses. Not to mention that the lens to flange distance for the back of the lens to the sensor is different on mirrorless. So Nikon has said they're coming out with a whole new series of lenses and that there'll be I think three lenses when uh, the camera is introduced. Most likely it's going to be a 24 to 70, a medium telephoto, maybe a prime. We'll see. Let's wait for the announcement on that. But they have got to really come out with a winning camera to outdo what Sony and Fuji and Olympus and Panasonic have put out there. Canon is still quiet. They've claimed that they've got a mirrorless camera coming, but they have yet to say anything. I think Canon's going to go nuclear. You know, they're going to have to drop such a bomb to be so much better than Nikon and Sony and these other cameras that they're really being careful with what they say and what they announce. But Let's face it, they're most likely going to have a new lens mount, a whole new series of lenses, and they're probably going to have an adapter to take the old lenses and put them on the new. Times are changing. You are going to see a war, because if either of these cameras are pretty good, you're going to now see each of these manufacturers try to find their own niche in the marketplace and really capitalize on that. And Sony has a head start, let's face it. You know, they've got a camera systems right now that answer the needs of many. The one weakness they've had is long lens glass. They've just introduced their 400 millimeter. They're talking about a 600, 800, and a 200 to 600 zoom. Sony wants to be number one. And they're in a good position to make it happen. If I've got to change and buy a new camera with new lenses, and that's a given, do I need to stay with the brand I'm loyal to? Or am I going to look at the other brands and pick the best solution? Some of my predictions, and I stress, predictions. First off, Sony made a series of lenses called G Master lenses that resolved to 100 megapixels. And they didn't make those just for 43 megapixel cameras or 24 megapixel cameras. They've got a great new body in the A9. They didn't make that A9 body just for a 24 megapixel sensor. I think Sony's being very clever. Once Nikon and Canon come out with some of theirs, they'll come out with their bombshell. And I believe their bombshell will be releasing an A9R with up to 60 or more megapixels. And where do I come up with that number? Well, you take the 100 megapixel and the new 150 megapixel chips and start taking full frame out of that and do the math and you're around 60 or plus megapixels. The only thing they need is a bigger processor and maybe eventually going to 16-bit instead of 14-bit. Sony's very capable of doing this. And don't forget, Sony's most likely making the chip for Nikon cameras and many of the other cameras. So Sony is not going to let Nikon and Canon roll over them. They've got a battle plan and it's going to be real fun to see how that materializes. So for the next few years, we're going to find ourselves in the mirrorless war and we're going to have to kind of wait and see where it transpires. But let me make a few other side notes on this. First off, Leica a few years ago introduced Leica SL. To their credit, they knew they had to go mirrorless and they built a fine camera. It weighs a ton, costs a lot, 
but it is a good camera. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with the SL. Olympus knows where their market is. And believe me, they've got a following. If you're a hiker or an adventure photographer, you can't find a better camera than the Olympus camera system with the pro lenses. Magnificent image quality coming off that chip. It's lightweight. You got a lens this size that has a 600 millimeter equivalent on the full frame side of things. And it's easy to put in a backpack and walk away. It's easy to take on vacation without having to carry a huge backpack on your shoulders weighing 40 pounds. So Olympus has got it figured out. Panasonic put their focus on video and they've done a marvelous job with the GH5 and some of the other cameras they introduced. They know where they want to be and they share those micro four thirds lenses so you can interchange it between Olympus and Panasonic. And don't forget medium format. Kind of funny there that both Fuji and Hasselblad have mirror solutions which are damn pretty good especially the Fuji. And with the 100 megapixel chips on the horizon, both of those cameras are gonna go 100 megapixels this year. Fuji was very clever and said, yep, you know, don't wanna get into the full frame war since they've already kind of got the APS-C market tied up. Let's just jump over that full frame and go to medium format and be where we wanna be. Of course, Hasselblad came out with their solution and it's a nice camera, not my favorite, it has limitations, but it is mirrorless, it has a wonderful interface, and it does a really good image quality and a job. And of course, Phase 1 hasn't entered the mirrorless market yet, although I have a Phase 1 mirrorless camera, which is basically their back put on the Alpa camera system, but I don't think they're sitting on their hands doing nothing. So, away we go. Now, one of the things that's speculating out there, and coming back to Nikon, is why did they make such a big lens mount and I think that they're very clever once again speculating predicting they put a big lens mount on and some people say they did that so they could put more light through the camera well you know what you can get a Leica M10 with a very small lens mount and get a 0.95 Nokalux lens and do a very nice job with you know wide open fast lenses frankly I think what they're trying to do is build a one-body solution that eventually can accommodate a larger size sensor. So we'll wait and see on that one. But if they have, and they've got this one body, and they're both putting you know, full-frame sensors in now, but can accommodate a larger sensor in the future, kudos to them. They're a step ahead, and they're thinking of the future. War is coming. I hope it doesn't divide too many of us photographers, because remember, in the end, it's about having fun. It's having the best tool we can when we're out in the field shooting. It's about getting the best image quality. And let's not pounce on everybody because they like a Nikon, a Canon, or a Sony, or a Fuji. Let's just kind of come together and enjoy taking pictures and having fun with these great tools that have made photography better than it ever has been before. And I'm hoping that all this innovation is going to benefit us in the future with getting the best photography we can. To the mirrorless wars, thanks for listening. I'm Kevin Raber, and I'll see you on the Luminous Landscape.